Hi everybody! I'm so excited to be sharing this video with you today. I've had this project done for a while and I just didn't get around to editing it because I had other things that needed to come first. So what I did is I took one of my empty dilution jars and I made a little album to fit inside. And it is so cute. So I have saved all my other jars <laughs> that I emptied just in case I want to make more albums. So I am cutting out circles at two and three eighths of an inch. And I work in groups of six and I cut out, well, I used a total of 29, but that doesn't divide evenly into six. <laughs> so I'm not sure, maybe I made 30 and I didn't use one. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe that's what happened. So what I tried to do with this is, like I said, I had the circles in groups of six and then for each grouping I would choose a different color. So for the first group I used pure sunshine and then on maybe two of two or three of those I also blended the next color I was going to use in the next grouping which in this case is cherry pie. So I like how that worked out. For me it made it a lot easier having a system because if not then I would have taken so much time trying to decide for each color. So that's why I chose to limit myself. And plus they're small circles so if you have things too different it can tend to not look like it all belongs together or it can just I wanted something a little more calming to the eye. Not so much in like colors that I chose but just cohesive like using the same groupings of colors to make it a lot more simple and easy to knock out. So the next color I'm using is bubblegum pink and I will after I'm done painting all those circles I do list the colors that I use. So just in case I forget to tell you one of the colors it will be listed. So like I said having a system in place um, it just made this go a lot easier. Like I stuck with a limited supply of paint colors and yes look I'm using purple <laughs> laid back lilac and I actually really like how these two colors look together. <laughs> I didn't necessarily say that I like purple I just said I like how these two colors look together it looks very pretty that's all I'm saying I may actually use those two together again maybe well, I have the paint, so I have to use it, right? Otherwise, what's the point in buying anything purple? Although, honestly, from now on, I probably won't buy anything purple. Unless it's like a really nice purple. Like, I do tend to like, like an eggplant color. There are a few shades of purple I don't mind. But anyway. So, yes, yeah, sticking with like a few colors of paint and sprays and stencils just limiting the products that I used made it so much easier to get this album done because otherwise I'm I'm the kind of person that will be overthinking everything and humming and hawing over which products to use what colors what stencils so this made it so much easier for me. Now this is Vibrant Turquoise. I end up having to change my blending foam on top because it was a bit too like crusty and it just wasn't spreading the paint very nicely. I do try to blend the paint colors together um, when using two different colors on the circle but it doesn't work great 
and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm not overly worried because there's going to be layers. It's not like that's all you're going to see is the paint. I do go in with stencils and doodling and collage, so it will get covered. So here I'm showing you all the paint colors that I used. Which was a little bit hard to do with only two hands and <laughs> nobody to put them in my hands for me. So now for the sprays. I don't have to tell you each color that I'm using because I have it popping up on the screen for you. So what I intended, I don't know if I actually followed through with it completely, but I chose an ink spray for each grouping of circles. Again, cutting out the decision of each time. And then what I did, I picked a stencil and then I sprayed with the color of spray that I chose for those circles. I did two circles in each grouping. So remember, I have one, two, three, five groupings of six, and then each grouping I have chosen a spray. So then I have one stencil, and I'm taking two circles from each pile and spraying the spray that I chose for that pile onto those um, circles. I'm sure it's easier than what I'm explaining. <laughs> I'm not the best at explaining things. But I'm sure with my words and actually seeing the video, you get it. <laughs> And that time I decided to get the positive effect from the stencils instead of spraying it on there. I'm telling you, having this system, like the way I limited myself and choosing certain colors for certain grouping of circles, it made things so much easier and faster to get through. Not that it was a race, but I'm a slow worker, so anything that helps me, I don't know, just not have to think too much and just play, this was a great album for doing that. Excuse me while I sip my coffee because my Keurig works. <laughs> if my Keurig wasn't going to work, I was going to have to buy another one because I could not do without the Keurig, not with not liking brewed coffee anymore. And I was going to get the fancy one that can do the lattes and cappuccinos. But my Keurig works now, so I'm not getting it. <laughs> I can do without it. But if it ever does break, then I think that will be my next one. All it does is 
brews a shot of coffee instead of like a cup of coffee, which makes it stronger. And then it froths milk in a different part of it. That's all it does. So if I had a milk frother, I wouldn't need that machine, but I don't have one. So I thought, well, all in one. And I doubt very much it's going to taste like a cappuccino or a latte that you would get from a like actual coffee place. But I don't think it was a whole lot more than just a regular Keurig. Anyway, I'm sure you guys don't want to talk coffee. <laughs> So this stencil I decided to go in with paint because the line it's so tiny and even with paint sometimes it just blobs too much that would be my fault because sometimes I have a little too much paint on the sponge but with spray and this stencil like a lot of the times it it just won't look so clear and plus, I love how the black marble paint just stands out on the circles. And the one thing I found when I was editing this video last night as I was looking at all the dilution products and listing it and everything, it was like, it made me get in the mood to play with my dilutions. It's funny, if you don't look at stuff and like look at something you made using certain things, like it tends to slip your mind and you don't think about it too much. Like I have so many things that I like to play with in so many different styles that it's hard to, I don't know, it's just hard to get to it. You know what I mean? It's like, I love Tim Holtz. I love Dilusions. I love All in Create, though I don't have much of that. So, and Carabel. And then I just have different styles and different things I love to do, like gel printing, collage, just regular art journaling, doodling and drawing and sketching. And I would love to play with clay, but it's like, I just don't get the time to do everything that I want to do. And then you throw in there that I need to take time to edit videos and stuff. That takes a lot of time to edit and then do the voiceovers and upload and then do all the things like the thumbnails and the descriptions and all that that takes time too and that takes time away from actual playing so yeah I need more hours in the day <laughs> and I gotta admit I'm not the most productive person I waste a lot of time that I could be doing stuff and I'm sure there's many of us that are guilty of that like I sit down in front of the computer and it's like oh crap well there goes you know one or two hours of not getting anything accomplished and a lot of times I'm just tired <laughs> and I, I can't get going so I've been doing better this week. I think my B12 is finally kicking in again. But, yeah. So some of it is needing more hours and some of it is my own fault. <laughs> so I'm just going in with a regular ballpoint pen here and doing a little sketching on some of the circles. Um, if the paint w or the spray was light, I tend to go in with a black pen or Posca paint pen whichever I choose and then if I was doing like this black paint I would go in with my white so I kind of let that decide which pen I used and I thought about editing all this out but just in case you want to see how I doodle on the backgrounds I left it in for you and just sped it up even faster 
And if you want to get through it faster, you can speed it up as well. Okay, I think that's one of my favorite features of YouTube videos is being able to speed them up. <laughs> I do that almost all the time. See, the black and white is my favorite. Oh, I must be watching something. So another thing that I've been procrastinating is my website. I am so close to being done. Like there's barely anything left to be done. But it's just those little annoying, boring things. And I think that's why I keep putting it off. That and I think I'm nervous about actually going live with the website. I'm afraid. I think that the same thing is going to happen with the last one that I'm just going to, you know, put all that work in and then not do anything with it. But I have to say this website is so much better than the last one. And that's thanks to the course that I took from Robin Marie Smith, the Makers Tech U. That made it so much easier, like so much easier. That and Squarespace that is way easier than WordPress. So those things did make the making of the website easier. It's just me. And at this point now, it's just me putting it off because I think I'm nervous to do it. <laughs> I'm afraid that I'll run out of ideas like to post on my website. Like the blogging part, I think is what makes me nervous. I don't know. I don't feel like I have that much to say. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like my life is exciting enough to blog about. Like, what do I talk about? I'm afraid of, and I know it doesn't have to be about my life. It can be, I don't know, like my favorite products. I could do a blog post on that and I can do different things. So I don't know. I'll probably be asking you guys a lot for, okay, what do you want me to talk about this week? <laughs> so I will be taking suggestions because I could use the help. So for this part, I cut out a lot of it because I'm just auditioning pieces on each and every circle and it would take, I didn't even record all of it. So it wasn't even a matter of cutting it out. Because this video would have been hours and hours long. So what I do is I select the pieces. I try out different ones. And then once I've chosen them, then I record again. So you will see me put each piece on the circles. And I stuck with all dilutions, like I didn't use any Mischief Circus or anything else. This whole album except for the white paint because I didn't have any dilutions white paint. Everything is dilutions. It was hard too because the circles are so small that it's hard to find pieces that fit. But the nice thing too is you don't have to use a lot in order to fill the circle. <laughs> so I also use some stamped images as well. And as you know, I like that combo of black and white with the color.
So for this one, I like the bow on top of her head, so I trimmed it out and I used it as a bow on her shirt. I thought that was cute. I actually like the first hat that I tested out for that one, but I don't end up using it. I use that piece and to me it reminds me either of like your cool, you know, when they have the head, the hair shaved on one side and then all the rest is like flipped over to the side. It reminds me of either that hairstyle or the French beret. <laughs> So for this one, I couldn't really find a neck that I really liked, so I decided to draw my own. And it's so easy to do. I love the black and white stripe thing, so I knew I wanted to do that. So I just do those black lines and then shape it however I want it. And any pieces that I cut off from the circles, I save and put off to the right, just in case I can use it in another circle. So as you can see, I kind of, like with this album, I kind of work in like an assembly <laughs> line sort of style. Like I did all my paints first and then all my sprays, all my doodling, and then I'm going to do all my collage, and then I'm going to do like all my quotes, and then I'm going to go through and see if anything needs to be added on all of them. So doing it in those steps made it easy for me. I mean, maybe... And usually I am one that likes to completely finish a piece before moving on to the next one. But for this album, I just found it way easier to work in this style. It made it go faster for me. And like I said, less thinking. It was just, you kind of get in that groove of the collage part. So you just keep going. I don't know, watching this video kind of makes me want to go and make another one now. <laughs> I kept all my paint jars. I'm trying to remember what I used to get all the paint out. I think, I'm pretty sure I used the Murphy's Oil Soap. I'm pretty sure that's what I used to clean the jars, like... 98% sure. And it came clean so easily. Oh no, my purple paint marker doesn't work. <laughs> and I know why it doesn't. Um, I had lost one of the tops to one of my um, black markers. And I didn't want that one to die because that's like one of my most used. So I stole the cap from my purple because I knew 
that one wasn't going to get used much. So if it did get wrecked, I wouldn't really care. <laughs> Sorry for all you purple lovers, but it's what gets sacrificed in my world. <laughs> but I have to admit, I like the purple on these circles. I like how it came out. I think for me, it's just finding the right way to use it. Like what other colors to put it with. Like it's just not my favorite color, but used properly, I can, I can, I can like it. I like that too. Taking two petals from the flower and making it like a little bow. I really like how that looked. I think that's so cute. Oh, these are the enamel, I don't know what it's called, it's the Ranger Enamel Accents, that's what it's called. So I use that just to put a little yellow dot on the flowers for like the center of a bow. Now I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of a way I can do another one of these albums, but make it different. If you have any ideas, leave a comment down below and maybe I will do one of them. I just needed a little piece because our legs just cut off. It didn't quite reach the top of the circle. So I just grabbed another little piece to make it kind of look like a little skirt. Worst part about editing my videos, I'm watching myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, just use it. It looks good. <laughs> but, you know, I don't listen. Although this idea came out pretty cute. Sorry if you can hear like a whole bunch of cracking sounds. It's not me. I can't control it. My desk is right in front of a big window and the sun is just beaming. And when it shines through my window, it just makes things crack. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the computer, my desk, or I don't know what it is, but it's making something expand, I guess, or... I don't know. I don't know what's cracking, but it does it all the time. 
So I have all my collage pieces added to the circles. And now it's time for the next step. Oh, no, I jumped ahead. I still have the other half to do. I thought I was done. Oh, what I did, now I remember. I th yeah, what I chose to do, I don't know if at this point I had decided it, <laughs> but I did end up taking half the circles and doing the collage like you saw me do and then take the other half and put quotes on them. So I don't think at this point I had decided I was doing that. I must have been playing with the idea of using stamped images on all of them. So here we finally have the quotes. And I will put up on the screen the name of the stamp set. I figure it's so much easier for me to do it that way because sometimes I'm talking and then I have a stop mid-sentence to tell you what it's called. And plus, maybe I don't speak clearly or <laughs> maybe there's certain words that you can't understand what I said so I thought if it's up on the screen then you can read it and you can jot it down if you want to take note of what it was So I do find when stamping images, I don't always think to use it, but using the stamping platform is a good idea because I find you don't always get a great impression with the first stamp. So I like that I can go in and not have to worry about the placement being just right to get another layer of ink on there. And I like it to be bold So while it's a pain in the butt to do it, like I think stamping like this is one of my least favorite things to do because sometimes I need to do it like, not so much for the quotes, but like pictures and stuff. It may take like five inkings to get a good picture on it. And I've even like re-inked my ink pad and stuff like that. And that's not all the time. It's just sometimes. I think it's the more detailed images that are harder to get a good stamping of. So how many of you have purchased Diane's new release stuff? I bought... I didn't buy all the stencils, but most of them, and I still can't get a hold of the stamps. Remember, I live in Canada, so it's not as easy for me. And I bought the stencils from Simon Says Stamp, which is US, is where I buy most of my stuff because it's easier. It's not the easiest getting a hold of it here in Canada at least I don't know of the places maybe there is somewhere that it would be so easy but I don't know I just I like Simon Says Stamp they tend to carry almost everything that I need so I got the stencils there but they still have not got the stamps I know Joggles does but I don't really like I like Joggles and their prices are fantastic, but sometimes the shipping to come like for Canada is a bit much and I don't like to pay a ridiculous amount for shipping. And with them, sometimes I get stuck with duty on top of that and I don't want to have to deal with that either. So Simon Says Stamp, I think they take care of that. They must because 
I've been good. So I've set up my circles the way I'm going to have it is like a picture, a quote, a picture, a quote. And that's why I did half and half. So if there are any Canadians listening and you know of a good online store for like mixed media supplies, please let me know. So I don't want to be missing it. And I would love to support, you know, a store in Canada versus shopping outside my country, but it's not that easy to do. Not for certain things, so if I can support a Canadian store, I would gladly do it. But the prices have to be reasonable and the shipping has to be reasonable. Which is crazy sometimes. It will cost more for shipping within Canada than it does for outside the country. It's just crazy. Crazy, crazy. So now I'm just showing you all my circles, how they turned out. It's basically, it's like doing the artist trading coins. Same thing. <laughs> I don't know if they're the same size, but same idea. Although these, I didn't want them bulky because where they're going to fit inside the jar. And I didn't want anything hanging over the circle because again, they had to fit inside the jar. So now I'm just going to go over all my circles and see if there's anything I want to add, whether it be more collage or more doodling, anything. Like some of them I'm fine with how they are, but then some of them is like I felt like they needed just a little something else. See, some of them, they just need that little bit of something to make them pop a little more. I actually had no intentions of doing this voiceover before I got ready for work today. <laughs> but then I thought, well, maybe it's a good idea because the house is empty. It's just me and the animals. So I don't have to worry about people interrupting and making noise while I'm trying to do the voiceover. Because my son's bedroom is right above this room. So when he's home, like, I can hear him walking around, or if he's playing a video game, then he can tend to be a little loud at times. 
when he gets excited. <laughs> And the animals have been fed, so they'll be quiet. Now, if it was before feeding time, not so much. The cats would be meowing like crazy. And if Tucker wasn't sleeping, he'd be barking at anything and everything that goes by the house. But luckily, they have full bellies, so they're nice and quiet and dozy. <laughs> See, I really need to talk to you guys more often because when I do, it gets me pumped up to do things. Unfortunately, I have to go to work, so I can't do those things. But just talking to you guys about the website, it makes me excited to get it going. Like, I don't know. I'm just hoping it's another way for me to connect with you guys and to for us to interact more and do stuff. So hopefully I can find ways to do that with you guys and like I said I am I listen to you guys I try to anyways I sometimes my memory you know faults me and I don't exactly remember something you may have told me but I get a lot of ideas from you guys like and I try to listen when building my website and what you guys wanted and I'm trying to keep those things in mind for when the website is live so keep talking to me because I do listen. Okay, so the idea for how I am going to put this album together is I just have this ribbon and it's going to be what joins the circles together and it'll just be folded accordion style. So I'm just using some double-sided sticky tape to adhere the circles to the ribbon. And I'm going, the, like the ribbon is going to be sandwiched in between two circles. So I don't have to worry about it coming off the ribbon. And I don't show me attaching every single circle. I'm just showing you a few so you get the idea of how I am doing it. And again, I'm alternating between a picture and a quote. And you see I'm just marking where to put my tape. Okay, so I've attached all the circles, like half of them, and now I'm flipping it over and I'm going to sandwich them, like the ribbon is going to be sandwiched in between the circles. So I'm going in with double sided sticky tape on the ribbon and then on the rest of the circle I'm just using scotch quick dry glue. And then I just attach the circle, making sure that it is the right way, like that it's not upside down on one side, that would be horrible. <laughs> it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would have been disappointing. <laughs> so again, I just show you some and then I will do the rest off camera. But I mean, this was somewhat time consuming, but it was fun and I don't know. I It came together pretty easily. It's just, I mean, if you're somebody who works fast, you could probably knock this out in one day, no problem. I'm pretty certain it did not take me one day because I work slow. So I'm just going around all the edges of the circle with some black soot distress oxide ink. And... That'll be it for the cards itself. Now for the top of the lid, this is a die cut, a Sizzix die cut. And 
it's just a scallop circle. I had wanted to be able to see that scallop around the circle on the jar lid, but I didn't have a circle that fit inside it nicely. So it ended up getting covered. And I chose one of my circles. I just picked my favorite. <laughs> and I'm using that one for the lid. So yeah, there must have been one that I didn't use. So I did have 30, because I have five sets of six, and I only used 29. So I don't know what I did with the one. I probably just chose my least favorite background and tossed it. <laughs> I like how you can see that image on the bottom of the jar too. So that is it for my lid and the jar and I'll just open it up and show you how my little album came together. So thanks so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this project. I was so excited to share it with you. So thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks so much for stopping by. Let me know if you like my videos by leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also head over to my Instagram account and say hi to me over there. If you have any video requests, leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. And don't forget to check out my other videos.